Well, I'm joined now by Richard Tice. He's property developer and co-chair of Leave Means Leave. So, Richard, Mark Stone saying there that business is very nervous about a no-deal scenario. Should they be? Well, look, I think what the Prime Minister needs to do is to make it very clear to Brussels she made a generous offer in Florence. She shouldn't negotiate against herself. That's, you know, a very poor negotiating tactic. She needs to make it crystal clear that unless they respond in an equally constructive way, positive and generous way, then actually we're going to walk away. Because what businesses want is some certainty and they want this process to be accelerated. There have been so many mistakes made in these talks. We should never have allowed this sequential process to take place. Yeah. The talks should have been going on 24-7, seven days a week, not one week in three or four. You know, there's no way in business we would run this process like this. But she needs to say we're going to publish our WTO plans, we're going to give confidence to businesses, consumers and the public alike in Britain, and unless we get some progress in the next couple of weeks, literally two or three weeks, we're off. Off and leave. And the crucial thing is, she must then say, there's no money from March 19. So really, you think before the end of the year, she should be able to oh, prepare to say, right... Before the end no of November. Time. Businesses want some action, and if we get on with it, it just gives extra months and weeks for businesses to plan. To be honest, any sensible, well-organised, well-run business now is planning on the basis of no deal, which is absolutely fine as a base case. After all, WTO, of course, is what most great countries trade under. If it's good enough for Australia and for America and Canada, it's good enough for the UK. But what do you make, then, of the fact that people like the Federation of Small Businesses, the EEF of today, said they're really, really worried about a no-deal scenario? I mean, and, what, and what do you are, know that and, they don't? And it's the CBI. These are the same organisations that dreamt up Project Fear. They've dreamt up this cliff edge. They're now basically rerunning Project Fear around three, four or five. We've lost count. You know, they were wrong then, they're wrong today, and they will continue to be wrong tomorrow. Let's remember, the CBI, they didn't back Thatcher's reforms in the 80s. They wanted us to stay in the ERM in the 90s. They wanted us to join the euro. These people have a track record of being consistently wrong, and they should be ignored by the public at large. Well, in fairness, the CBI would say they were only in favour of joining the euro for about 18 months, and then they came down against it. Just look at their track record. <laughs> you know, all the big issues of the day, these people have been wrong. Look at the entrepreneurs, people who understand cash flows, putting risk on the table as opposed to the corporate managers. The entrepreneurs, people like, great people like Dyson, like Peter Hargreaves, like Tim Martin of Weatherspoons, those are the people that people should listen to. They're quite happy to, do, to go to WTO. Very interesting you make this point about the sequential nature of the talks. I mean, Wolfgang Munchau in the uh, FT today saying, actually, there is a point now where it's impossible to reach a deal on citizens' rights in Northern Ireland until we know the exactly. structure of trade. You go along with that. Completely. And we should never have allowed it to, uh, to take place. It's actually contrary to the, uh, the wording of Article 50 anyway. It's basically illegal. We shouldn't have allowed it. They need to stop that. They need to say, we've got to put everything on the table. We've got to accelerate it. And it really has to be 24-7. And what about... What does a WTO exit with no deal look like to you? Because, I mean, on this show last week, we had David Tyler, the chairman of Sainsbury's, warning that food prices <coughs> would go up 22% in the event of a no deal. I know. We, we keep getting these scare stories, uh, you know, from people like that. The truth is, UK supermarkets are already looking to source more product domestically. The truth is, we'll start buying more oranges from South Africa as opposed to from Spain because of the tariff differences. Businesses, was, businesses will adjust, consumers will adjust. And if it means we buy more wine from Chile and Argentina or South Africa or Australia and less from France, so be it. It's not the end of the world. Very, very briefly, Richard. Philip Hammond, should he stay or should he go? Well, if he's going to stay, then he needs to take some happy pills and, you know, <laughs> become much more optimistic and set out a, a really positive future for the UK. What we're really worried about at Leave Means Leave is that actually what he's trying to do is to trap us into a sort of new Brexit membership of the European Union. That would be the worst of all worlds. He really does need uh, to focus on a much more optimistic future. All right, Richard Tyson, I'm glad to see you're on your happy pills anyway. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.